Uh, open to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3, if you would. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3. I do have one pad to pass out. Pastor Ryan, if you'd give me a hand, this is for the missionaries, for the gift cards. And that is the title of the message tonight, Continue on the Right Path. Of course, our theme for this year is what, church family? Continue. What do we hope for these young people to continue on the right path? They're here at church tonight. That would be the right path, would it not be? They're following the Lord, and, and as Hope said, she's praying to see what God wants to do. That's the right path, is it not? But we've seen, all of us, young and old, have seen graduates come and go, some through the church, some not through the church. Some that are on the right path, and some end up on the right path, and some seem to go off the right path. Fair to say, right? And you wonder, well, well what's the difference is it that some love the Lord more or less, and possibly? Is it that, that some have a better opportunity than others, and maybe, but, but I've seen folks with what I would perceive to be very tough possibilities serve the Lord with their life, and, and God does marvelous things, and, and those with seemingly endless possibilities kind of waste it all. But we're, we pray and we hope, young people, that, that you will continue on the right path. I'm going to be looking at you a lot tonight. I'm going to come down there as well, just so you know. Everyone else can just listen in. You say, is that okay, Pastor Howell? I don't know, but I'm going to do it. So if not, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 3 through 5, the Bible says this, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil, and we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I'd ask that you would help me the next few moments. Lord, I want to now, and at the end I'll pray again for these seniors. Lord, as they graduate or have graduated, I'd ask that as you would give them the wisdom. Lord, give them the strength. May you guide them by your Spirit. Lord, may we as a church family uplift them in prayer while they go the route that they think you've called them to. And Lord, would you protect them from evil and from the wicked one. And oh Lord, we, we long to see you work through their lives. We see before us tonight, Lord, possibility and talent and potential. But Lord, we know without you, we can do nothing. So Lord, guide us during this time tonight, these brief moments, and, and help us to follow you in, in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, young people, you've graduated or, or will graduate very shortly. You've been on the right path for a little while now. We can liken it sometimes to us driving down the road and you see a sign that says police speed trap up ahead. What do we normally do at that time? No matter how fast you're going, you instinctively take your foot off the gas and, and touch the brakes. You see, up until this point in your life, there have been times that, that you've seen the sign from your parents and sometimes a very plain sign from your parents or from authority or from the school, wherever you may be, that says, hey, speed trap ahead. And those, some of those signs have kept you on the right path. Maybe it was a time when, when your parents decided to explain to you why you couldn't answer back to them this way in a very calm and controlled manner. Maybe they, they, they realized their, their wonderful job as parents and they instructed you in the way of righteousness. Basically, they, they got the devil out of you. Kept you on the right path. But you know, pretty quick here, you're going to be in a place, like many of us are, where if you're on the right path, it'll be largely up to you. You'll get to make the choices that, that most of us make. Am I going to get up on time in the morning? right? Am I going to be committed to what God has called me to? Am I going to be committed to, to my job or committed to my family or committed to the Lord? And we would clearly agree that there are choices that are good choices and choices that are bad choices. Some that would be on the right path and some that are not on the right path. You see, we've tried to put you on the right path here at First Baptist Church. We've tried to give you the truth. We've tried to help keep you on the path with your choices, but now you get to embark on a journey that we don't get to, to dictate for you. You get to decide this journey. 
And I can tell you, stand before you, it's a wonderful journey, is it not? Amen? Is it not wonderful to follow the Lord? Can you not see His provision, His blessing, His help, and His comfort? You get to decide if this is for real. Is God who He says He is? Is this book true like it says it is? Is God's way, as Pastor Todd spoke to us, the right way? And we can tell you that it is, but you have to decide that now. Oh, I hope as, as you walk through this journey that you begin, if you've not already, to talk and speak to your God. Not my God as pastor of First Baptist Church, not the God that is your mom's or the, the God that is your dad's, but the God that is your God, that he hears you, he answers your prayer. He'll instruct you in the way of righteousness. He'll show you the way. Hope he'll show you the path. He has a path for you. It was a police officer who observed a, a lady in the middle of a road. Obviously, this lady was in some need and, and needed some care and help. And he said, ma'am, are you okay? She answered or she responded with this question, yes, but how do I get to the hospital? I want to talk tonight about how you get to the hospital, how you continue on the right path. First of all, in this verse, there's a recognition. The Bible says this, but the Lord is faithful. The first part of the verse, if you wouldn't mind showing that up on the screen again, I know I'm asking a lot up there, but, but the Lord is faithful. This particular phrase is said a few times. See, I'm coming down here right now. I can come closer. I can stand in the pew if I need to. This particular phrase is repeated through the New Testament. Every time I read this phrase, there is a moment of college that comes back to me. I happen to love college. I enjoyed it. I don't want to go back to college, but I enjoyed college. All right, and I enjoyed all of it. Well, most of it, okay? Most of it. Um, but I was in Bible class. I was in 1 Corinthians Bible class with the, with the dean of the seminary. And in 1 Corinthians, we were having a, a, a test over the first chapter, different characters in the first chapter. And, and you may have not studied 1 Corinthians like I have, but there's Chloe, and, and it was her house that was next to the temple, and there's some other characters that are listed in, in Corinthians. And then the, the, uh, the professor posed this question, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, who is faithful? And I'm racking my brain to think of all the characters in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. And I guess some random biblical character. But the answer was simple because 1 Corinthians said the same thing that Paul says in 2 Thessalonians, God is faithful. And much to my chagrin as I got my quiz back as a, as a Bible student at a, at a <laughs> studying to, to be in the ministry, I missed the question, who is faithful, because it was God. I've never forgotten that. And every time I read this, when I was studying for this message, I read that again, I was like, oh yeah, the Lord's faithful. The Lord is faithful. But I don't mind forgetting it on a quiz if I, just to make sure I don't forget it in life. God is faithful. Remember this, God is faithful to recognition. The Lord is faithful. He will carry you through this time, this journey. He is faithful. That is his character. He can't deny himself. He is the faithful one. There's a, a geyser at Yosemite, right? The name is Old Faithful. It, it sends up water about 20 times a day, they say. They can predict it with about 90% accuracy. Blast streams of hot water, and, and there's over 4 million people a year that go experience Old Faithful. But I'd rather experience the one who is faithful, the one who has called us to a purpose, the one who has called you to a special plan for your life, that he'll lay out in front of you, whatever that may look like. It may look like different than the one of the person who's next to you and different than mine, and, but that's okay because God is faithful. Don't forget the recognition, God is faithful. He will be faithful. And those times when you think he isn't, when you're almost about to miss that question on the quiz because you feel like life is upside down, you feel like God's forgotten about you, don't forget, God is faithful. Always is. For me at college, there are times that the, the school bill tended to, to weigh on my head and, and weigh heavy on me. And you wonder, God, did you forget about me? But no, God is faithful. Whatever you take, whatever you walk in life, whatever... God brings you through. Remember, God's faithful. There's a recognition about the faithfulness of the Lord. But then I also I see a reminder. The reminder is this. He says, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you 
and keep you from evil. He's going to establish you, establish you or steady you and keep you from the evil. You see, what we need in life is you embark on this journey. You've never walked this path before, have you? You've never graduated from high school before. You've never gone to the next phase of your life before. You, you now get to adult. Now, I do have a phrase I often tell our young people that you're not a real adult until you buy your own toilet paper. <laughs> this is true. This is good. Write this down, folks. Now, when you're young, mom and dad buy you toilet paper. When you have to buy your own, you look at it like, this is the soft stuff, this is medium soft, and here's tree bark, and that's all I can afford. <laughs> You're now adulting. Thank you. Get an amen over there. You get to adult pretty quick here. It's not all it's cracked up to be. But God, he'll steady us. My wife is, is a wonderful lady, and a few things that she does extremely well, but one of those things is just a random trait that she has is she can teach she taught our kids to ride a bicycle extremely quickly and extremely well. She has much more patience than I would have in this particular endeavor. And our, our one son was riding a bike, I think within 10 minutes, the second son, shortly, and Danielle a little bit longer. I wish I'd had her help when I was learning to ride a bike because I remember my parents teaching me to ride a bike and they, they let me go in this field of trees and they still laugh about how I use the trees to stop. Thank the Lord there were no cell phones for videos back then because I know they'd show up on these screens today if they were around. But my wife, when she was teaching our youngest daughter, Danielle, a few weeks back to ride, to ride a bicycle, she just taught her partly in the road, and, and as Danielle was riding, she needed steadying. She needed steadying. Danielle would, would start to, to wobble back and forth. So Doreen was right there, and she'd kind of grab the grab the grip, the handlebar, right? Steadier and then let her go. Always within arm's reach of our daughter. And that's exactly what the Lord does. As we follow him, you and I, and, and, and listen, they don't need this any more than you and I need this adult. Is that not true? As we travel this road of life, there are times that we begin to wobble, and I'm so glad that God reaches out and steadies us, makes us stable and secure. He's a lot better, steadier than we are. Yet what do we do? I got it, Lord. I can steady myself. I've got this. How'd that work out for you? You skinned your knee, didn't you? Hit your head, didn't you? Bent the frame of your bike, didn't you? Thankfully, God helps us back up on the bike, and he'll steady us again. The Lord is faithful. He'll establish you. He's going to steady you just like he'll steady all of us if we let him. I love the next part of that verse, and he'll also, God saves, because he'll keep you from evil. Listen, young person, an adult, this is across the auditorium tonight. It's a wicked world out there. There's a wicked one who is trying to destroy everything, not some, but everything that you and I believe in. The devil wants to ruin every single life in this place, including this place, because he hates us, because he hates Jesus Christ. And that's what Jesus said. Don't be bothered if you're hated. They hated me first. And you know, they're going to find people don't like you because you're a Christian. They're going to think you're crazy. They're going to have preconceived ideas. I'm so glad that God goes before us, keeps us from evil. Look back in our life, my life, and I see the hand of God throughout my life. Can you imagine for a moment if God's salvation that's saving us was removed from our life? What our life would look like? Just the, the sheer magnitude of what our life would look like. And I'm so glad not only does God steady us, but He saves us. He's faithful. He cannot fail. He's God. There's a reminder for us. But last of all, there's a response. The response that we have. Paul makes a great statement in verse number four. After he says that God is faithful and he'll establish you, he'll keep you from evil. And he says this, Paul says this. He says, and we have confidence in the Lord. It's like he says to those people at Thessalonica. He says, listen, God is faithful and we have a lot of confidence in not in you, in the Lord. 
Not because you're a bad person, not because we don't like you, but we know people. I know me and you know you, and I'm glad that God is faithful. We have confidence in the Lord, confidence in God's power. Paul says, we don't trust you, but we trust God. We trust him. And parents, church members, we pray for these young people. We can trust in God. They may be thousands of miles apart from us, but God is still faithful. Confidence in God's power, but also confidence in God's direction. It says this, you will both do and will the things which we command you. The Lord will direct your hearts into, first of all, the love of God. I hope you fall in love with your God. I hope you're already in love with God, but if not, get in love with God. Right here is a book you can learn about him. I hope you're in this book every single day the rest of your life. Every single day the rest of your life. If you're not, you will miss out on the love of God in your life. You'll miss out. You can't afford, I can't afford to miss time with God any single day. I'm not strong enough. Right here. The Lord will direct you in love, in hope, that what you do will be worth it. That's what the end of the verse says, into the patient waiting for Christ. You see, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. It says, we must all appear, appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. You see, to get to this point, you've had to take some tests. A few of them. I need ladies and seniors from our school to take a big verse test. Lots and lots of verses and other exams in Spanish and and other classes. And if you get all those those things done and and you get them done in an acceptable manner, they, they give you a diploma, right? If you don't pass the test correctly, they make you do it again. Typically how school works, right? But Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that the greatest exam ever to be given will be when we stand before Jesus Christ. And why I'm here for you and hopefully why your parents are here for you is to prepare you for that exam. You see, that, that day when you stand before Jesus Christ, there are no alternate answers. You can't say, well, well, in, in, in my book, page 35, um, sir, if you look at this correctly and twist this around, I'd like you like to argue for answers. I was an answer arguer as well in school. Do we have any more of those here in, in school? Maybe I was the only one who argued for answers. I just didn't like to do anything wrong on, on the test. And I, I figured whoever this teacher was, they probably hadn't read the same book that I read, and, and uh, they normally didn't see it my way. Unreasonable teachers that I had. But that day, there are no answers. Jesus Christ is the only answer. We must all appear before his seat. The question goes like this, how did you live your life? We must all give an account for ourselves. How how did you live for me? We'll say either, Lord, by your grace, I live for you, or hold our head in shame. You see, the patient wait in Jesus Christ. Because sometimes you've studied for a test, and you're ready for it. And you're like, bring it on, because I can take this thing. That's the kind of anticipation that I want you to have for the coming of Jesus Christ. And then there are those other times when all of a sudden you realize that there's a test, and you forgot about it. And that's no bueno. That's Spanish for those of you folks here. And I would shudder to think, You appear before Christ and not be ready for that exam. So I want you to continue in the right path. There was that police officer who came across that lady who looked like she needed help in the middle of the road. He asked her what she needed and she said, how do I get to the hospital? And he said, continue to stand right here and you'll get there. How do you continue in the right path? You know what? I think we can confidently say with this church and your parents, stay right in the middle there. You'll be okay. Stay right there. You'll get there. Your parents have given you truth. This church has given you truth. You stay right there. Stay inside that truth. You'll be on the right path. You can say before the Lord, Lord, I just lived in your grace for your glory on your path. Lord, I thank you for your word for these young people. Lord, I pray for them again that you would protect them. We have confidence in you, Lord. Lord, I ask that you would watch over them. 
You'd steady them. Lord, that they would stay on the right path for your glory. You know, as I pray for them with our heads, with our heads bowed and eyes closed, I wonder if there's someone else, though, who says, Pastor Howell, as you spoke, God spoke to me. Would you, would you pray for me? God spoke to my heart tonight as well. I know it was for the seniors up here, but, but God spoke to me as well. Would you pray for me? Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. You know, the fact is we all need to stay on the right path. We all need to realize that God is faithful. <laughs> He's the only way. Lord, help us. Lord, if there's someone here who's never trusted you as their Savior, Lord, would they make that decision tonight to follow you and trust in you and you alone. Lord, guide this time of invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand to our feet, the piano will play, the altar will be open, you can come pray. If you don't know you're on your way to heaven, we'd love to open the Bible and show you how you can trust Jesus Christ.